Hello everyone, so today we're going to be talking about NFA, which is Non-Deterministic Finite Automata. So NFA is a model of computation that generalizes deterministic finite automata. That is, it, it is a more generalized view of DFA. Uh, in the sense that each state is allowed multiple transitions for a given input character. Now, what we learned in DFA was that every state has to have a, a transition going uh, going from that state with the with all the possible input alphabets so if there are zero if there are the input input alphabet given is zero and one so one uh, so suppose a state q1 has to have transitions going from it from from it uh, on input on both on both the inputs zero and one but in nfa there is no such restriction nfa is more of a free uh, it's it's like an easy version and it's like freely uh, it, it can be freely drawn and freely, um, uh, uh, like what, what it exactly does is that it's a more generalized view. So it's like you have to give all the possible input combinations for that state. For example, in the example that you're seeing right now, as you can see at state A, there is an input on, uh, there is an input on 0 and 1. All right, so as uh, the question is give, given is that all strings that contain even number of zeros or exactly two ones. Now the clause here is or. Uh, as we've discussed before, when when the clause is or, that time, uh, both of them do not have to be related. Both of them could be separate, like either this or that. Conditions have to be met. But if it was and, then both of them have to be related and both of them have to be met at the same time. Right, so in this di diagram, uh, it could take two two paths. Even it could be uh, it could be accepted when we get even number of zeros, and it could be accepted when we have exactly two ones. So when we have even number of zeros, we accept it. So look, zero zero, we accept it. But if it's just zero, we don't accept it. So if there are four zeros, zero 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 zero, we accept it. And when there are exactly two ones, we accept it too. So one, one, and after that we don't care what happens, but we do care if there is another, uh, suppose if there is another one, we do care and it goes to a dead state. So it, it goes to a state where, where it's not accepted. So this is just the accepting state and this is the accepting state, right? So when we have, like in a DFA, usually if we get two ones we would also have to handle what would happen if we get a c if we encounter an input of zero at this state c but we didn't we just we just handled what would happen if we get the state if we encounter the input alphabet one so that's the best part about nfa is that you have extreme freedom you don't need to handle all the operations or all the inputs that would be encountered on the way just need to ha you just need to first fulfill the criteria the main criteria and if that's fulfilled it's fine for example if the input was something like 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 so suppose we get 0 uh, we get exactly one uh, the uh, the criteria that we would have to get exactly one ones so if we get if we get 0 we could also stay here so if we get 0, suppose the, uh, the input is 0, 1, 0, 1. So if we get 0, we stay here. If we get 1, we go here. And then if we get 0, there is nowhere to go. Right? So if it was a DFA, we would have to handle all of these operations. But in an NFA, it does not matter. In an NFA, you just have to uh, ful fulfill the, this criteria, which is exactly two ones. And then that's about it. That, that, then your, uh, then your uh, di diagram is complete. Let's look at another example to clear this out further. So all strings such that the third symbol from the right at, uh, is zero. So let's look at example string. So from the right, the third string is zero. So this will be accepted. From the right, the third string is zero. This is the third string. Right. So whatever we encounter and the in the beginning we don't care suppose we encounter 0 1 0 0 1 0 it doesn't matter so we can count to 0 1 0 and then when we encounter uh, when we encounter the third uh, this zero we go to the state when we encounter 
0 or 1 we go to the next state when we encounter 0 or 1 we, we go to the next state which is the final state see this is really ambiguous like if it was a DFA we would, uh, we would be more uh, confident to know what each uh, uh, what each input alphabet would go to which state it would go to but here it's like totally ambiguous so it's like you would you could have multiple transitions in this uh, and stay in this state as long as you want as soon as you get the third symbol from the right uh, the third zero that from the right you go to the next state and then after that you go to the uh, remaining states depending on the input as long as this part is fulfilled so NFA is like an easier version when you if the if in the exam question if it's given that you can either draw an NFA or a DFA for a particular uh, string then it would be easier to draw an NFA because it's totally ambiguous you could draw anything and it would be correct as long as the mean criteria is fulfilled so let's look at the next another diagram uh, a string such that 0 0 or uh, 1 1 is a substring so we don't care what ha what we get in the beginning we don't care what we get at the end but as long as we get 0 0 as a substring or 1 1 as a substring we could go to two paths either get 0 0 as a substring or either get 1 1 as a substring as long as we get these uh, uh, fulfill these we are our diagram is complete if it was a DFA we would have to now look at how what we would have to do if this is a DFA this is the DFA DFA uh, convert the DFA uh, conversion of this of this question this is the NFA which is a very ambiguous one you just get you just don't care what happened what you get in the beginning you don't care what you get in the end as long as you get 0 0 continuous 0 0 and continuous 1 1 as the substring then your D NFA is accepted but in a DFA you would also have to handle what you would get if uh, what you what would uh, where you, what your transition function would be if you would encounter one in the middle you would again have to start from the start state and then you again have to search for two consecutive zeros or two consecutive ones again if you get another zero in the middle you would have to start again and try to find two consecutive zero ones so in this way NFA is a more generalized format and DFA is a more specialized format in the sense that it would uh, it would consider all the possibilities this is infinite and this is finite so think of it that way Alright, so that's about it for NFA. I hope your concepts are clear. It's a really generalized view and if you would uh, practice the questions, then it will get easier to understand. Alright, so 